Oh, we will pocket that sweet yes. bonus loot. Uh huh. One thing I love in this scene is that she's been married to him, I think, in story for at least a year, and he's still Tom Wan's gams. There's a lovely lack of intimacy to that, isn't there? Hi, I'm Mark Mylord. I'm the director and executive producer on Succession, and I'm here to talk about episode three, Connor's Wedding. If you haven't seen Connor's Wedding, episode three of Succession, please switch off right now. It's Quite a big spoiler. This is notes on a scene. Your dad is very sick. He's very, very sick. What? What? Uh, it's, it's okay. Tom is apparently dad's sick. Uh, what? what do you mean he's sick? Like sick what? like... What's going on? Tom? Tom, are you still there? Connor's wedding and Logan's death overlap partly as a script device, really. There's a bait and switch there. We point the audience's attention in, in one direction and the real thing creeps up and coshes you on the head from behind. The kind of classic juxtaposition of that. And also because on succession, we really like to mess up weddings. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Uh, hey, so the idea is uh, the dad will pop by, be dock side, and you guys are up here. Oh, okay. Uh... You think he's going to pop by? Spoke with Carrie. He's hoping. Oh. Okay. Even though the characters are somewhat generous um, in that they've turned up, unlike Logan, there is a statement, I think, by the characters as to how much effort they've put in. We look at Connor here, lovely black tie. We look at Kendall here, maybe should have a tie, but he doesn't. Uh, we look at Shiv. Um, she kind of put together, hairs in a ponytail. It's not, she's not exactly spent hours blowing that out. Hey, Roman. Yeah. Hey, uh, your dad is very sick. He's very, very sick. What? What? Uh, it's, it's okay. Tom is apparently dad sick. What? Uh, what do you mean he's sick? Like, sick what? like... What's going on? Tom? Tom, are you still there? Is he okay? In the script, and speaking for Jesse, he liked the idea of the kind of anti-Shakespearean death, the, the modern day death, the death that many of us experience in families that's by separation is learned by email or phone call or text even. And we went to most extremes there to isolate the siblings on a boat at a wedding uh, and to put Logan at, you know, 35,000 feet. Who's with him? Uh, he had a uh, very serious... Ser serious what? All that performance from Matthew is live. That is his voice. Not like we record it separately and played it in. Matthew was actually back with his family in London at the time, but spent literally all day attached to the phone, going through that again and again to feed the actors. And we did a bunch of sound tests on the phone to make sure it would come through just the right amount. You could understand what he was saying, but also have that slight frustration of just having to lean in and uh, to, to actually understand exactly what was going on, to put the audience into the siblings' experience as much as possible, to parachute them into their skins. Tom, what's going on? What, what um, happened? So he was short of breath and he went into the bathroom and he was gone and there was uh, someone heard something and he was uh, we were concerned tom's phone he's not an iphone kind of guy he's more of a pc samsung android kind of guy we basically have a meeting at the beginning of each new season and talk about the personal props for each character and phones always come into that obviously and we actually leave it that very much up to the actors as well what they feel comfortable with oh i'm an iphone person or i'm a you know samsung or whatever it may be it became very apparent in season one that we were going to spend an awful lot of time shooting scenes on aircraft. So it made both financial and logistical sense to actually build a set, which we did. We put green screens outside and project the sky onto that. Pat, our DP, does this brilliant job of actually getting that real sense of directional light come in. So I, I don't think anybody has ever said, oh, that's obviously a set, or I hope not anyway. When we got into post-production, into the edit, became a real debate as to how much we should cut between the airplane and how much we should just stay on the siblings. The initial idea was maybe we'll just stay on the boat pretty much all the time. But then when we did shoot, and Matthew was so damn compelling, that really murkied up the argument at that point, and we ended up cutting more to Matthew than we initially intended just because it was just so good. They're doing chest compressions. Frank thinks you should speak to your dad. And I can hold the phone, I can hold the phone near him if you like. Why does Frank think that, Tom? 
we did very few takes of this entirely and, and you know uh, and culminating in what you're seeing here which was the long the half hour take but the very first time we did it I didn't rehearse at all I, I gave kind of parameters to the actors physical parameters and, and a lot of those they just discovered them for themselves for instance little details if you look on the right of the screen here in the bar area and we had two bar people working behind there so that the actors the characters would naturally gravitate away from there and then behind the characters there's a well going down to the next deck down and we put background down there you can't see them on camera but the actors know they're there and therefore the characters would move away from that we close the doors off we put a security guard outside so we basically hemmed them in and pushed them into the middle of the room without me ever saying please stay in the middle of the room if I put good reasons why the character wouldn't go there then they won't go there. They're so smart as actors, they'll just make the correct choice for uh, always led by character. Our whole kind of modus operandi, I suppose, for the grammar of the show in the shooting of it is that the camera, we, the audience, can barely keep up with the action where we're, we're often just one step behind it. And that's why I don't like to rehearse. I like the camera operators to have to react to what's happening, not to anticipate it. We follow that idea through into the edit where we'll often edit five frames late just after just after but not to anticipate unless there's a very good reason for doing so cumulatively i think just gives that helps with the tension and that sense of barely keeping up with the action ken's gonna get shit um, i'm gonna get shit When Kendall goes downstairs to get Sarah, I've told him she's not going to be close to the stairs, so I'll give him that clue, but then he has to look for her, and therefore there's absolute authenticity to that, where the heck is she, where is she, where is she, oh, there she is. And again, it's that sadism of the camera of just staying with him in anticipation. We know, and he knows, what he's about to have to do. And again, there's that kind of classic juxtaposition of his absolute dread, the worst moment of his life, um, with everybody having such a job time which felt so wonderfully cool and I love Jeremy's performance it is so beautifully spontaneous he's so alive to the moment we had a good few hundred extras with us for a few days on the boat and it became very obvious what was going on uh, the smart people we NDA'd everybody up the wazoo obviously we had help from the security team at HBO I'm um, going around and talking to people explaining um, why it was so important that we kept this secret but beyond that we relied on goodwill you know you can only go so far with an NDA and if somebody posts anonymously there's there's very little you can do ultimately but we didn't have one leak which i remain incredibly grateful for he was still breathing a minute okay. ago but it's it's very bad I think it's... Uh, yeah so shim's coming uh okay uh, they, um they they think he's gone yeah, what i think he's gone what happened what uh, do you mean well they think they think dad died what yeah no i'm sorry no um no i can't have that this performance from sarah I've, I've seen this a hundred times and it still absolutely floors me. I find her reaction throughout this scene. I can't have that, the, 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 the seeking to control that which you can't control and that regression to childhood, daddy, don't die. Daddy, uh, I love you. Uh, uh, don't go, please, not now. I find incredibly um, powerful. Jesse and I, with this take, were stood next to each other at the monitor and I was just had tears rolling down my face and I could see out my peripheral vision that he was the same. Um, I was completely wiped out by her and, and just so in awe. In that way that Meryl Streep does, you know, you see, as soon as you say cut, she goes, oh, how was that? Yeah, over there, a cup of tea, you know. Um, uh, and she just snaps right out of it. She has this ability to flick a switch and to dive straight deep, deep into the character. There's no kind of gradient in there. It's just bang, straight back in. I find that... I think she's an incredible actor, I really do. Just watch the way that Sarah walks. She walks and then she almost staggers and then she tiptoes. And it's extraordinary choice. That kind of detail that she's aware of and the way she uses her body to express the character, even with her back to camera, that to me should be a masterclass for anybody that wants to be an actor. But I, I, fuck. I don't know, I do reading the script and working out our staging on the airplane, I felt very queasy um, about the idea of showing Logan's body on the floor. And I didn't know whether that was 
good queasy or you know or showing too much respect and you know and again you know my whole kind of ethos of let's be sadistic with the camera and get it right in there for some reason that didn't feel appropriate with Logan partly I suppose to keep an element of doubt with the audience is he really dead is, it, uh, 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 is, is he you know is he, is he playing some kind of sick trick on them but more than anything else just taste wise as a choice it didn't feel right it felt cheap almost to actually dip the camera down and see him at some point we wanted to absolutely definitively and clearly say yes he that is Logan and he is dead. The cruelest way to do that, it seemed, was in that the almost kind of coziness of the fireside chat of having the phone up against his ear. What I did with this shot was a, you know, a rare cheat, was to basically shoot with a stunt double. Heart compressions, it's a one inch compression, so it, it can damage your rib cage. So we had a stunt person come in um, so that we could do those for real. And then I asked Brian to come in one day and literally to lie down for 10 seconds. I'd lined it all up. I'd put a marker on the floor exactly where his head should be. We basically took his head and put it onto the torso of the stunt person here. That's Brian. That's not. That's the stunt guy. What we then did in post with the help of our visual effects team was to give a slight rhythmic push to Brian's head so that it was in sync with the body compressions so they felt you know, obviously united as elements. And that's one of the rare cheats that we did. Can I speak with the pilot, please, Tom? You know, I'll, I'll call Frank's phone. And he can take me through the flight deck. Okay. okay, so Frank Kendall's gonna call your phone to be taken through to the pilot. Okay, okay, that's happening. Okay. Jess, I need a few things. Yeah. Uh, my dad's dying. I'm just going to do facts, okay? The tragedy of the episode and, and also the, I think the emotional truth of it is seeking to control what we cannot. In seeking clarity uh, uh, as to what's happened to their father, they're also in denial somewhat, you know, some more than others, particularly Roman, obviously. All I'm saying is that we actually don't know. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, right, well, yes, but you sound delusional. I sound... What, what am I, out-fucking-voted here? They're seeking to control and they're falling back on every device they possibly can to do that, whether it be through bratishness as you know as rich people getting what rich people want no i can't have that with shiv or in this case with with kendall business school speak if one is you know firm enough it will happen i shall take control tell them to do it uh to, to do it right and of course that is futile we need to get connor we need to tell him five yep. okay come here buddy what is it is it just important. Come here for a sec. What? Alan Ruck as an actor is, um, well, as a person, is just, uh, just the most generous human, and has spent, I think, four seasons as Connor does, slightly playing second fiddle a lot of the time. One lovely thing about season four is that we were able to wrap. Alan's character so much into the primary narratives and the way you just see the quality of his work just rise up is just wonderful. His, his reactions were just heartbreaking and brilliant. I think he's dead. Well, is he? Again, just in terms of emotional truth, it's just faultless to me. I think it's exquisite. He is so self-effacing about it. He credits Sarah with just giving him this, you know, emotion to look at and therefore to react to. He never even liked me. Hey, hey, sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I mean. He did. He did. I just, I never got the chance to make him proud of me. He's dead. Making it about himself, but instantly being ashamed that he's made it about himself and, and instantly switching it back to his younger siblings. The, the essential beauty in, in all the absurdity of Connor is that generosity of spirit. There's an underlying kindness to that, which I find incredibly touching. I can't do this, okay? Episode three is obviously a game changer. The central conflict has been, you know, one or more of the siblings in conflict with their father. Now Logan has died. Um, that changes the whole parameter of where will the conflict be and the fulfillment of the promise in the title of the show, who will succeed? Even though we see the siblings as united by their grief as we've ever seen them, we know also that, that the portent is not good. We know that there will be a Darwinian fight for survival and to come out on top. It's difficult to define succession. Obviously, that's one of its many strengths. I don't think of it as a comedy. I think it's very funny. But if I had to put a label on it, for me, it's a tragedy. I agree with Jeremy Strong on that.